Well, hello once again, Jacob Burton here from StellaCloning.com. And in this video, I'm gonna walk through the process of making your own beef jerky at home using a simple dehydrator or your home oven. My favorite cut of beef to use for jerky is top round or bottom round. Here I'm using top round. Now the three things that I like about this cut is number one, it's inexpensive. Number two, it has a low fat content. Fat will oxidize and become rancid. It also doesn't fully dehydrate. So you want to always use a lean cut of meat when making jerky. And finally, it's low on connective tissue relative to other economy cuts, meaning we don't have a whole lot of tough, chewy connective tissue to break down during the dehydration process, which is gonna give us more tender jerky. Now, speaking of tender jerky, while I have the camera at this angle, I wanna point out to you the direction of the grain, which is gonna be important when you slice. You can see the grain is running vertically here, which means when it comes time to slice this top round for your jerky, you wanna cut thinly across the grain. This is going to shorten the muscle fibers and give you the most tender end product. Now, before slicing, you wanna pop this in your freezer for about 30 minutes to firm it up, which is gonna make it a lot easier to slice thinly. Here I'm dropping the top round on the scale just to check its weight. This recipe is gonna be good for about a pound and a half or 760 grams of top round. And here you can see the top round's been firmed up in the freezer like we discussed, and I'm cross cutting it against the grain. Now, if you're lucky enough to have a deli slicer, what's up, Dave? Then you can use that. Also, you can ask your butcher or the person at the supermarket to um, slice this on the meat slicer for you. But here, since we don't have a meat slicer, we're just cutting it as evenly and as thinly as possible, emphasis on the even, because we're just gonna go back later and pound it out. Now, a common method for pounding out the meat is to take a zip top bag, slice down both sides to detach. That way you can just fold it back like this. Sprinkle some water in that water is gonna help to keep the meat from sticking to the bag, which will cause it to tear and allow it to slip around during the uh, pounding process. Drop your piece of meat in and give it a couple of glancing blows until you achieve your desired thinness. Now for the sake of efficiency, you don't have to do just one piece at a time. Here you can lay in uh, three pieces or as many fit in your bag. And again, just some glancing blows until they're nice and thin. Another good tool for this is a good old fashioned wooden French rolling pin. And what you do is you break up the muscle fibers with a couple of glancing blows just going up and down the meat. And then once you've tenderized the muscle fibers, you can then just take your rolling pin and roll it out. And it gives you a really nice even thickness. For the marinade, we're gonna be using half a cup of water, two tablespoons of soy, two tablespoons of Worcestershire, two tablespoons of rice wine vinegar, a teaspoon of powdered ginger, two teaspoons each of granulated garlic and granulated onion, one tablespoon of black pepper, two tablespoons of turbinado sugar or brown sugar, and half a teaspoon of kosher salt. Layer the meat in the marinade, mixing it around piece by piece. Uh, this ensures that each piece has an even coating of marinade on it. Uh, if you just drop the whole stack in there, you're going to have uh, an uneven result. Now, this marinade results in a classic black pepper umami flavor of jerky, but this marinade could really be anything you want it to be. The trick when you're mixing up the marinade is to taste it, and you want a good balance of salt and a little bit of sweetness and some acid to round everything out. Some umami ingredients like our Worcestershire sauce or the soy sauce. And just keep in mind that when you dehydrate the jerky, all those flavors are going to concentrate. So you don't want to have a marinade that's super strong on the salt or the sweet or the acid because once you dehydrate the jerky, your end result is going to be a concentrated version of that flavor. So just taste it and make sure that you have a good mild balance of each ingredient. Cover with plastic wrap and place in your fridge overnight, minimum 12 hours. Best results, 24 to 48 hours in the marinade. It's going to give you really nice, flavorful jerky. And the following day or at the end of your marination period, remove the plastic wrap and give it a few tosses with your hands or a, a utensil. But I like to use my hands here because it just helps to really give me a feel for that jerky and see how all the marinade has been absorbed. Now, if for whatever reason your marinade was juicier than this, just pour off any excess. Now, here I have a fairly large rectangular dehydrator. It's going to run you about $160. You can pick up a smaller one for about $50, or you can use your oven. Now, here I have a tray that I just lined with some foil to catch all the dripping so it doesn't get my dehydrator all dirty. And then we're just going to lay the jerky on the trays uh, in an even manner. And just make sure that you have air gaps around each slice and that you really spread it out so there's no wrinkles or creases in the meat 
to make sure that you get an even airflow top to bottom. Now, if you're using your home oven, just place this on a wire rack over a standard baking tray and proceed as normal. Set your dehydrator for about 155 degrees Fahrenheit and your timer for about four and a half hours. That's the point that you want to check it at. It's going to take closer to five and a half to six hours. Now, if you're using a home oven, you want to set it to 200 degrees Fahrenheit and put the convection fan on if you have one, and also crack the door and kind of leave the door open during the dehydration process. Now, it'll take around six hours for it to finish in the home oven, but use your intuition. The best tool in your kitchen is your own intuition. You want your jerky to look something like this, where it is dry, but not brittle. If it's brittle and it's crumbling apart, it means you've taken it too far. Make a note in your recipe to reduce the time next time. If it's looking a little bit juicy still, then you want to go ahead and just pop it in for another half hour and just test it as you go. For storage, I like to place it in a zip top bag. If you want to store this for longer than a week, you can order some silica packets online and the silica packets will absorb the excess humidity in the bag, keeping the jerky evenly dry. But I mean, let's be honest, I, I've never had a uh, homemade bag of jerky last me for longer than a week in my home. It's usually a couple of days. Oh, 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 oh